excited to announce this 2022 class coming in. Uh, we've got, we're still waiting on about five or six uh, guys to come in. Uh, again, very, uh, I think, very uh, explosive class. We got some good D linemen. We got some linebackers that can help us on special teams and move around. Uh, got a little bit old line uh, that we needed to kind of uh, filter in. Some I think could come in ready to play. Some could. Going to take a year to develop, which I'd like to do with all the linemen and D linemen. We've got some uh, corners, which we needed help with in the cornerback position, and uh, working on some safeties. Got some other guys that aren't on this list that we're still working on. We got uh, one in particular that uh, is a frustrating part about recruiting for a high school kid. Is uh, we recruited him and talked him through the process. He had committed to a Division One school, and the Division One school called last night at 11:15 and dropped him. I got a text last night from their coach, and uh, I you know, just feel sorry for the kid and feel sorry for, you know, what can we do and the offers that he could have had and, you know, for a school to tell him that he's he committed to him and they have him there. It's just, uh, it's just a bad way to do things in recruiting, so we're going to do everything we can to help him uh, get here because he's a pretty good football player as well. Um, and he liked this place, but when Division One school calls, it's a little different. So. So we've got about four or five on the way over here. We had two more come in um, that we can't talk about until we get them certified, uh, go through the right steps. So but I'm excited about this group we have and the guys we can talk about. We got, you know, we there's some local kids that we can't talk about because they haven't uh, completed the processes as they should have. Or, or we wish they would have this morning so I could talk about them. So we will have another uh, probably uh, eight to ten guys on this list as the night goes on, so uh, shoot away. So Braden Klafka is not, can't talk about him yet? I don't know who you're talking about. Braden Klafka? I don't know kid. who you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like you really went size, a lot of D-line. Mm -hmm. uh, so you feel that was a big necessity for you? Well, I think we had to get better in the uh, pass rush game, uh, number one. Uh, I thought our run stopping was average uh, or above average uh, a lot of times. But we never could get enough pressure on the quarterback. So I think we've got some guys that have some ability to uh, get off blocks, converse the edge. Uh, and then we got some guys up in the middle. Uh, the Sokima, uh, Sosa Sokima from that passes, I think he's going to be a, a steal here. Uh, he's just a strong uh, kid that can just push the middle and push the pocket back and allow those outside guys to come in there. You, um, no quarterbacks. Probably the first time in your tenure? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. There's some, uh, I'm hoping there's some coming okay. down the path. So, When you look at this class, who's a couple, you know, we don't, obviously the two names are pretty uh, sketchy to us a little bit on the names we don't know. Who do you look at on here and go, you guys know this name in a year or two? Uh, I'm going to start with a guy that he's going to play a lot, or I expect him to play a lot, but you're never going to know his name until he screws up. And that's Jimmy Fex. <laughs> Jimmy Fex is uh, projected coming to be a long stamper for punting and field goals. So uh, that's a guy you'll never hear his name until he really screws up, and then you'll hear it. Uh, but I think he's you know, a valuable part. So uh, uh, so I think that's that's a name that I'd like to put out there that uh, hopefully you never hear him from this point forward <laughs> So uh, because he'll be uh, doing things the right way. Uh, you know, I'm looking at – there's the Leonard Adams, the defensive back, I think is a guy that you might know. Marion Jackson is a guy that uh, he got dropped by a Division One school last week. Um, that's a good story. Is he and his dad drove in from Salt Lake City. Drove uh, last Friday night, came in, spent the day here Saturday, uh, got up at 3 o'clock Sunday morning, went back home. And uh, he loved the place. You know, he thought it was better than the Division One school that dropped him. And he was talking to our players about the atmosphere here and, what, uh, what it's like on game day and things like that. Uh, it got him all excited, and uh, he's one of the last ones we got in before I could come up here and speak. Um, I think Christian Morris, an outside backer, uh, Klein Force, is, he's got a chance to be really good uh, with the scheme we play on defense. And, you know, uh, Junior, and I'm, I'm not even going to pretend to pronounce Tua Pola Tua. Tua Pola Tua. Uh, I think. Uh, as a big tight end, um, he's going to be uh, 
he's got what you know I would call some baby fat on him that he's going to turn into lean muscle and uh, I think if he can build that up pretty quick, he could be a force as a tight end to be reckoned with for us. Also, you can put him on the outside. He's very athletic and create mismatches for us. Uh, I, I, there's just so many. Uh, Favor, uh, Azizogbo, okay, he's a defensive lineman. that uh, He didn't even come up here to visit. We tried to get him up here and he had a hard hard time doing that. So uh, Coach Hatton and I went to his house and uh, talked to him about the program, showed him the program, showed him what we had. Coach Hadden had some players reach out to him and tell him what it was like and, um, so we could get some questions answered and uh, he committed to us uh, last week. And, uh, I think he's, he's got a chance to be really good. So uh, You can go down that line and pick out any guy and I think uh, I'd like to see, again, some red shirt going on uh, to get him built up, but uh, I think our receivers and DBs have a chance to play right away uh, in a lot of that group. You know, there's not a lot of skill positions on this list. Last year there was. Do you feel like last year's recruiting class with this one kind of balances out the team really well? Recruiting is getting to be uh, uh, taking on a completely different model now. Uh, it seems like we went through COVID and the Division ones could not go out, so we were able to go in and get some guys that we thought were going to be very uh, uh, more Division one type players, and we were able to steal some of those. Now with the transfer portal, um, I think the high school route is good. Uh, is, is, is got a lot more kids available because the Division ones just go to the transfer portal and use the transfer portal. Uh, the, the game, the NCAA is changing. It's, it's the NCAA, is, in my opinion, maybe no longer existent with the way things are going because the one way the, the transfer rules and uh, the transfer portal, it's in. Like I've heard Lane Kiffin the last two days talk about, it, it's free agency. And when you look at a what a Division One school might do, is instead of going to junior college and high school, they're going to that one-year Division One guy who can transfer without sitting out. And now they've got them stuck because they only have the one-time transfer rule once. So now I can go get a guy that's been in a system for a year, bring him into our program, and now he cannot transfer. Out. So they don't have to worry about him leaving. So it's a completely different uh, realm of recruiting, and, and there's 2,700 uh, players in the recruiting, I mean, in the transfer portal right now, and I would say 50% of those aren't going to find a place that, that they want to go because they don't have that. Um, so uh, I think the the method and the the model we have had since we've been here uh, is go after the high school kids. I think it's really helped us to be able to get some really good. Good players. Um, I, I think we went out and got the best needs for our program right now and what we wanted. Um, the good thing about these guys is they chose to be here in West Texas. Uh, there's nothing that we do to force them or try to throw more scholarship money or anything else at them. We show who we are, you know, what we plan to be, or let our kids show them. Uh, we're very transparent in our recruiting. Uh, we keep it all about us talk about any other programs and uh, it's uh, I want kids that want to be here I want these young men to come in here because they're going to give us you know the commitment that we're looking for to, uh, to build this program the way it should be built how Coach, excited are you at just some of the size coming in like this kid tell Matthew 6'6 six, six, 300 pounds and then you, just, you got a lot of good size coming in well when you're 5'9 like I am <laughs> everybody's taller so everybody on there but maybe one guy is, is uh, they got size so um, no I think that's the, the thing about the size is the 6'6 six, six, the 6'5 six, is can they move and play and I think that's the difference uh, I think we could go out and get 6'7 six, 6'8 six, if we wanted but could they go out and move the way we need them to move in, in our offense and our defensive scheme uh, so I think you got to look at that it goes the other side like you look at an, an old lineman who might be 6'2 what does he bring to the table like uh, Brock Kavner, Joe Kavner, Brock Kavner, JT's brother. Okay, he's 6'2", right? If he was 6'4", we would have a chance to get him because he's that good of a player, moves that well. But at 6'2", he, sl he doesn't meet the criteria of a Division One team, um, but he's a damn good football player. So when you look at the 6'5", and the 6'6", I think to get those guys, we have to be a little, I don't want to say lucky, but uh, – 
we have to really research and find out those guys that can move and can do the things that we need them to do. Um, so it's very good for us to get that size in here and still be able to move and still be able to play. Uh, Speaking of Joe, uh, Cavender, you got JT's brother. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a mean deal. Well, I told him, I said, there's a couple things that if you signed here, this could happen. You know, first, you can get your brother back for all those times he beat you up when you were a kid by going at him in drills and stuff like that every single day. And he kind of liked that idea. And I said, the other thing is, you know, we're going to put a wall up for all Americans on a, in our hallway. Wouldn't it be good to be a brotherhood up there with, you know, two brothers being all Americans on the same team at about the same time? And, uh, Brock brought into that. And, and I believe that that could happen. I think JT's already put himself in that position. And I think his brother, if he's got – half the work ethic that his brother has, he's going to be one hell of a football player. Like they've already, sorry, like they've already mentioned there's a lot of linemen on this uh -huh. list, but in particular, what positions were you really wanting to look for and, and what players were you, were you, that you lost, you know, you need to fill those gaps? Uh, you know, we really lost 12 guys, so we weren't missing a whole lot, but uh, uh, really looking at D linemen, you know, athletic D linemen that can help us right away. I think we got some that can do that. Some of these guys uh, at these positions are not going to be at those positions. We're going to move them around. Uh, and, uh, you know, a linebacker down the line could be a, a tight end or a fullback to that effect. So uh, I think we got athleticism. Uh, and now we as coaches got to piece them together and put them together to where they fit our scheme. You know, you look at a linebacker, some of those are inside backers, some of those are outside backers. Um, some of those uh, defensive linemen might translate to being an outside linebacker. In our scheme, so uh, I think again, that's how we got to kind of look at it. Uh, we wanted receivers that could run, and one of the uh, receivers that could play. We've got a couple on the list there. Uh, I think we've got a couple more coming on board here in a little bit. Uh, and uh, you know, some of those athletic type guys uh, that could end up popping out to that position. So. You kind of talked about not losing a lot of guys. And last year, I mean, y'all's offensive line was pretty strong. Y'all's yep. running game was strong. What's it like to have even more guys come in and be like, hey, you know what? We're just as strong, maybe even better now with these guys coming in. The good news about that is, you know, we've got every offensive lineman coming back. So uh, it gives these young guys a chance to come in and learn from experience how to do things, you know, uh, how to train, how to – take advantage of uh, the experience that we have here and learn from them before they're pressed into action. So uh, I think to me that's the best, the biggest thing. Uh, like I said, I want to redshirt every offensive lineman because uh, the, the physicality, the mental part of the game, uh, and just acclimating themselves to college is a big thing. You know, you're, I want to make sure that they come here and are successful not only as football players but as students. And, to start that way, you want them to start the semester, the year off, on the right foot, uh, have a successful first semester in the classroom. So uh, I think that gives us that advantage to do that. Same with a lot of these defense alignment. All these defense alignment aren't ready to play, I don't think, right now. You know, they could come in after a great summer and, and show some things. But, uh, but we will pick and choose to get the ones we need to uh, play those positions. You kind of touched on I mean, only 12 guys leaving. Do you feel like some of the leaders, you know, in years past will be just as prevalent going into this year leading this new group? Well, for to finish the way we did last year and be disappointed, uh, I think that leadership role has already started. I think that it showed in the way we recruited these guys uh, in this particular class. Uh, we had a lot of older guys that were helping out with the recruiting, wanting to make sure that uh, – here is the culture of our program, and this is what you can expect when you get here. So it's not a, I mean, you hear the term hazing a lot. Uh, it's not a hazing type atmosphere here. It is uh, our players spend time with these guys, and uh, they really interview them. And there are some guys throughout this process that uh, our players said, Coach, I don't think you'll fit in with us. And so we have to reevaluate and look. And, you know, because our players are trusting us to get the right guys come help us win the championship. And our players are looking for that. So uh, I commend our players for everything they did in helping us recruit this class. And, uh, you know, I got to thank, should have thanked all the Michael Ives and Aaron Mark, Mike Berry and Aaron Mark, Feldmans for 
helping us out through all this and getting food. You know, we, we were able to, again, showcase this stadium. Brent Seals and Jordan Ballard did a great job and their crew of, of helping us with uh, everything. And uh, Ken Johnson helped us secure this. Paul Swingall's our compliance guy. He does uh, make sure all these guys are legit so we can talk about them and, and other things and make sure we, we're doing, you know, we do things the right way here. So, um, a lot, there's a lot more than just, we had professors come in Ag professors, Edgar over there, and uh, uh, Angel uh, Angel Ross came over and helped us. So you know, we got a lot. There's a lot of people other than just us football coaches that are doing uh, showcasing this place and uh, showing what West Texas is all about. So.